Hello Puzzle Lovers and welcome to a new episode of Are You a Puzzle Master Christmas Edition. For this special occasion, we don't have one contestant, but two. Our first guest has always been interested in puzzles, but has an extra reason to love them. He met his wife because of a puzzle. He saw her at a friend's party, trying to assemble the haptic puzzle by Stuart Coffin. They solved the puzzle together and have now been married for 30 years. The second contestant likes a good challenge. So when he came across Hanayama cast puzzles, described as too deviously evil to inflict on you and your friends, he bought them and started his journey as a puzzler. He has a blog called Brian's Damn Puzzle Blog to chronicle his descent into the realm of the puzzle obsessed. They are good friends. Please welcome Brett and Brian from the USA. Hello, Brett and Brian. How are you doing today? Good, thank you. Doing great, thanks. Welcome to Are You a Puzzle Master Christmas Edition. It is a pleasure to host both of you on this show. I hope you will have a great time and that you will be able to answer as many questions as possible. How are you feeling right now? With Brian here, pretty good. <laughs> I would say the same with Brett here, feeling much better than if I were on my own. <laughs> we make a good team. Right. That's great. You seem to be very good friends. So I am sure you will be able to answer a lot of questions today. I wish you the best of luck. And before we start, I would like to remind you of the rules. Welcome to Are You a Puzzle Master Christmas Edition. You will have to answer 10 questions that increase in difficulty. For each correct answer, you will get one point. At the end of the quiz, you will get a title based on the number of points you get. For one to three points, you get the title of Puzzle Amateur. For four to six points, you get the title of Puzzle Trainee. For seven or eight points, you get the title of Vice Master. And if you get nine or 10 points, you will be declared a Puzzle Master. If you answer 10 questions correctly, you will become a Puzzle Master Hall of Famer. To answer these questions, you will have access to two lifelines, the 50-50 and a hint. And of course, if you don't answer any of the questions correctly, you will have to quit puzzling and we will send you a Christmas Jigsaw Starter Pack. Good luck. You both seem ready? Then let's start with question number one. Which of the following Christmas treats has a Hanayama puzzle designed after it? Answer A, cake. Answer B, candy. Answer C, ice cream. Or answer D, cookie. Uh, Brian, I think that's probably A, cake. That's Bram's puzzle, right? Yep, I agree. Okay, let's validate answer A, cake. And let's find out together if it is the correct answer. And indeed, it is answer A. Well done. Your first point. I guess you are both familiar with Hanayama puzzles and you might have solved a lot of them. Which one is your favorite? I like uh, Cast Loop and Cast Diamond um, because they're really good to share with other people. They're like not too hard, but they're you know a little bit puzzling for people who aren't experienced with puzzles or even people who are. Yeah, one of my favorites, I think, is Cast Baroque. I just like uh, sort of the movement where it moves through itself. Not the best to hand to a, to a complete novice uh, like some of those others, but uh, it's a fun puzzle. Interesting. On my side, I really enjoyed Cast Infinity. I just liked it a lot. Well, well done for this first question, and let's move on to question number two. The X-Mass Tetrahedron and X-Mass Octahedron puzzles by George Bell double as a Christmas tree ornaments. The puzzles are made of what 3D printed shape? Answer A, pyramids. Answer B, cones. Answer C, spheres. Or answer D, cylinders. Uh, do you think it's C, Brian? Yeah, uh, I would guess C because George Bell likes doing things with spheres. Yeah, I'm glad one of the answers wasn't like truncated cube snub up right. or something. Yeah, so, but I think <laughs> yeah, C. It's a safe bet. Okay, you seem to both agree on answer C, spheres. So let's find out if it is the correct answer. 
and indeed, well done once again. That's great. Are you familiar with George Bell or his puzzles? Maybe you met him before? Yeah, I've, I've met him um, actually coming back from a puzzle party in Japan. We randomly ran into him. He was at the same party, but not traveling together with us. Randomly ran into him in uh, Narita Airport, which is a large airport. So it was kind of funny just to see somebody that I knew in the mass of people there. Yeah, I met him a few times at the International Puzzle Party as well. And you seem to know each other quite a bit. Do you meet each other outside of puzzle parties? Uh, yeah, um, Brian lives up in Boston. And when we travel up there, we try to get together. Um, he's got a big puzzle event that he, he runs with his wife. And uh, um, I always go to that. So, yeah. Yeah, and I'll go down to New York for the New York Puzzle Party and, and various other reasons down in New York. And when I'm in, in Brett's neck of the woods, I'll stop by. And we try to play escape rooms together whenever we can. That's pretty cool. Okay, so let's move on to question number three. Notorious puzzle designer Andrew Parr has co-authored several puzzle books and designed devious puzzle boxes. Which of the following LEGO puzzles is one of his creations? Answer A, Christmas gift card box. Answer B, the gift box. Answer C, cakes and pies. Or answer D, the candy box. Um, I've got a... Uh, I'm not certain, but Brian, do you have a, a thought? Or... No, okay. I don't have a guess on this one. Okay, I think it's C, Cakes and Pies. I'm pretty sure I've seen him uh, with a cake or a pie design. Um, and I don't recall seeing the other ones. So I think either C or D, but my guess is C. You okay with that? Yes, I would go with your suggestion. Let's find out if it is the correct answer. And indeed, it is answer C. Cakes and pies. Well done. Yes, I think I saw it on his website. It is a three layers cake. You have two brown layers that represent the chocolate. And in the middle, you have what looks like the cream, like a white layer. And then there are some cherries and some chantilly or cream on top of it. It looks very gorgeous, very attractive. And you, Brian and Brett, do you enjoy Lego puzzles? Is it something that you solve sometimes or not at all? I've got a couple. I've actually got an Andrew Parr uh, one that's a flag box um, that I think has a nice solve. Um, and I've, uh, I like Lego puzzles in general, but the ones I like best are ones like that flag box where it's clear which moves are legal and which moves aren't because anything that's Lego that's not glued together, it's a little questionable, you know, are you allowed to do this operation or not? So his, um, so far seem to be solid you know you know clearly which ones are which yeah and i don't have any i think i might have tried that one at your house uh brett but uh, yeah i haven't really gotten into the lego puzzles yeah they can be quite fun and i did solve the one so far it is the among us puzzle i cheat free and i really enjoyed it so much it was so much fun to solve and such a great theme for a puzzle but like you say, when you solve them, you need to be so meticulous. I was going to say, my son uh, actually is, is uh, uh, grown up now, but um, last year for Christmas, he made me some Lego puzzle boxes because he uh, has liked Legos forever. And I enjoy solving his designs. He has some pretty, pretty good ones. Oh, that's so cool. Is it something that he does regularly, like every Christmas? He made some when he was very little, uh, and those were those were fun. His designs now are sort of more refined and, and uh, sturdier and everything. Um, I've actually had him help me with other uh, Lego puzzle boxes that somebody else made where um, they weren't so clear about what you could take apart and what you couldn't. And I was like, okay, here, this is clearly broken. Can you put this back together for me? And he'll, he'll sort through the instructions and put it back. But um, yeah, it's fun when he comes up with a new puzzle design. So you have a son that is a Lego puzzle designer. That's so cool. So. Once again, well done for answering question three correctly. And let's move on to question number four. The XXL Mass Tree Puzzle was designed by Alexander McGarrix. What kind of puzzle is it? Answer A, a bird puzzle. Answer B, a packing puzzle. Answer C, a puzzle box. Or answer D, a sequential discovery puzzle. Are you familiar with that one, Brian? I don't think so. I've seen a picture of it, and it's either a burr or a packing. And my question is, is it a, um, like, t 
2D packing. I think it's it's sort of a burr with a frame, and I don't really remember. I just have a vague image of it. So I, I think I'd say burr on that one. You okay with that? Yeah, yeah, I have no idea. I don't know if it would, would we want to use a 50-50, or are you close enough for you? Well, my worry is that it would come down to burr or, or packing. Yeah, also, I think the question difficulty might ramp up a little bit here, so... All right. We'll I'm, I'm, willing, I'm willing to take a shot at, at uh, I think I've already got 50-50. I think it's A or B, so. All right. Uh, you okay with A? Yep. Okay, let's go with A. Okay, let's validate answer A, Bird Puzzle. And let's find out if it is the correct answer. And indeed, well done once again. Two times in a row, but you guess it right. Are you both familiar with Alexander Magaric's puzzles? Brett, you said that you saw a picture of a puzzle. Was that a long time ago? I think it might have been last Christmas I saw it. Um, I guess the other thing is Magyarx mostly makes burrs, so uh, yeah, that was another clue for that one. But um, I remember like a, yeah, I remember the, the it looking complicated. That's what I remember <laughs> about it. And you, Brian, are you familiar with Alexander's puzzles? No, I don't think so. I'm not as into burrs, so uh, it probably wouldn't have come up for me. Ben Brian, what kind of puzzles do you prefer? Uh, mostly puzzle boxes and sequential discovery type things, but I, I have a pretty broad uh, set of interests, but most of the stuff I end up getting is, uh, is puzzle boxes, I guess. Okay, let's move on to question number five. The box for Kelly Snash Santa's workshop puzzle is inspired by which warming festive drink? Answer A, mulled wine. Answer B, hot choco. Answer C, gingerbread latte. Or answer D, granny's tea. I know we did do like a granny's tea thing at some point, but I don't think it was uh, Santa's workshop related. Yeah, agreed. Um, oh boy. Uh, yeah, this one, I other than uh, agreeing with what you just said, I don't know what else. Um, do you want to, uh, I mean, I'm thinking it's more likely to be hot chocolate than anything else, um, given... Just yeah, that's right where I was Kelly. leaning as well. Yeah. Um, are you okay with that? And we save the, the other things for later? We've, this is the fifth one, right, I think? So, or the fourth fourth question? Oh, five, right there. So mm -hmm. I'm okay I'm okay with just guessing on this one. As, as B. Yeah, me too, I think. Let's validate answer B, hot Choco. Let's find out if it is the correct answer. And unfortunately, oh, oh it was Granny's tea. tea. Oh well. Answer D, Granny's tea. Yeah, I didn't realize that was Santa related. Yeah, I remember seeing it on the website. I think he designed a lot of Granny's tea puzzles, and one of them is related to Santa. I don't know if Granny's tea puzzles is something that he makes often, like once in a year or something like this. He definitely redoes, um, you know, uses old tea boxes to make puzzles, uh, but I wasn't aware that he had one any themed after uh, Santa's workshop, so. Oh well. Did one of you solve a puzzle from Kelly Snash? Uh, Brian, I remember we were at somebody's house and you solved like a huge puzzle chest that had a like bird's nest sitting on top and oh, everything. Yeah. You spent quite a, quite a while on that one. Yeah, it was at Jeff Farron's house, I think. Yeah. That was great. Yeah, I think I have one of the Granny's tea puzzles actually as well. That was that was an interesting one. It makes use of the tea bag, which is kind of clever. And I've solved one or two of his at some design competition, I think as well. I like how he uh, takes um, old materials and you know, recycles them into new objects. I think that's a lot of fun. So let's move on to question number six. A cracker puzzle is a 2019 Karakuri Christmas present. Which designer from the Karakuri group designed this puzzle? Answer A, Yo Kakuda. Answer B, Osamu Kasho. Answer C, Akiyo Kamei. Or answer D, Shu Sugimoto. I have this one, but I, I have trouble keeping the designers straight sometimes. Yeah, I think that Sugimoto did um, a series with the Christmas tree and the cracker and there, uh, the Christmas boots. I think those were all Sugimoto um, because Kasho did 
some other ones. I've, I've forgotten which which ones for each yeah. of those years. And it's not Kakuda and it's not Kame. So I think it's yeah. Sugimoto. Yeah, Kakuda likes to do animals. Kame right. did some different stuff that I remember. Yeah, that right. seems like a good bet. Okay, let's find out if answer D is the correct answer. And indeed, it is Shu Sugimoto. Well done. Are you members of the Karaku Recreation Group? Do you receive their puzzles every year? Yep. Yep. Yeah, they're they're great. They are very good. Good value. I I get the box and I hand it to my wife and then she puts it under the tree for me. So I, I uh, have that as a Christmas present. That I I get. You have better self control than I do. I tear it open and tear <laughs> through them all as quickly as I can when it gets here. And do you have a favorite puzzle from Karakuri? Or maybe a favorite designer? I'm always interested to see what Kawashima is up to. He's He tends to have multiple multiple compartments, tend to be more moves than uh, some of the other ones, a little less simple than some of the other designers. But uh, some of the new designers have been coming up with some really interesting things as well. Yeah, I like uh, Kasho um, you know, designs. I think they're, they're creative and uh, have both sculptural appeal and puzzle appeal. And lean a little bit more towards my taste um, in them. Although Kawashima is can be counted on for a solid puzzle as well. Um, and um, Brian, I think uh, you got. Um, I'm trying to remember the guy's last name. Starts with D. Uh, the person who designed Kiki and Ankh. Um, uh, those both seem like really clever puzzles. So uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what more they make in the future. Those weren't Christmas puzzles, but more Karakuri group designers. Well. Well done once again for your correct answer. And let's move on to question number seven. Dilemma Games, a company infamous for their fun and high quality wooden puzzles, designed a gift card holder puzzle. The puzzle box, which can fit cards or cash inside, is a great Christmas present for puzzlers. From which country are they from? Answer A, Thailand. Answer B, Philippines, answer C, United States, or answer D, China. I have no idea on this one, do you, Brian? You want to go with 50-50, or what, what's the other option we can do? A hint? Uh, yeah, I have no idea either. I feel like getting it down to two and then guessing between them is probably better than a hint if we have no idea. Okay, I'm fine with that. Can we have the 50-50? Sure. Let's use your first lifeline, a 50-50. And you are left with Thailand and China. Hmm. I wish we knew if it was plastic or wood because then I'd have a better guess. Um, Thailand makes a lot of the uh, you know, wood monkey pod puzzles, whereas right. China makes more of the plastic ones. Um, it says wooden puzzle, so maybe Thailand. Are you okay with that? Yeah, that seems like a good guess based on that. Okay, so I guess A, Thailand? Let's find out if your reasoning is correct. Are puzzles made in Thailand in wood and puzzles made in China in plastic? And indeed, it is answer A, Thailand. Well done. That's amazing. How, how do you know that? Is that like common knowledge or something? That just seems to be my memory of it. I don't know. And Brian, do you have any specific... Yeah. I feel like I've seen a similar thing, like you were saying, the monkey pod type uh, type wood that gets used in a lot of Thailand puzzles, or Thai puzzles. Sorry, and what is monkey pod? Monkey pod is a type of wood. It's like a brownish wood. Um, and honestly, a lot of times it's used in uh, lower quality puzzles as well, you know, that you see just in random gift shops and kind of the same, like, you know, puzzle cubes that don't look very interesting and, and other things. Um, and uh, I had uh, derogatorily called it crap wood. Um, Rob Stegman and I would call it that. But I um, have seen some puzzles recently from uh, Deadwood and other places that changed my opinion about Monkey Pod. It's really in how it's used, like most woods. Um, it could be a very nice wood. So uh, yeah, I, I don't call it that anymore. But <laughs> yeah, you'll often see it with a rough finish that's just characteristic of cheaper puzzles. Okay, thank you for answering that. And let's move on to question number eight. Which one of these designers did not design a Christmas related puzzle? Answer A, Volker Latusek. Answer B, James Fortune. 
Answer C, Stephen Baumegger. Or Answer D, Derek Bosch. Okay, so I know I know James Fortune designed a packing puzzle um, with the various Christmas shapes inside. Um, did Derek design any Christmas puzzles? Yeah, I was trying to think about that as well. Nothing that comes to mind. Volker seems to go with abstract puzzles, so I can't think of any, you know, like Fermat and Euclid and stuff like that. Um, right. I'm not familiar with any other ones. Casino. Mm -hmm. uh, so. Yeah, seems less likely to be Christmas themed. I, I can believe Derek has and that Stefan has. I, I would lean towards Volker, I think. Yeah, it does seem most likely, but not particularly confident. Yeah, well, we've got this question and two more. I'm sort of okay with guessing Volker on this one and saving our our hint for the others. Are you okay with that? Yeah, I think so. Okay. So, A, Volker? Sure. Let's validate answer A, Volker, la tout sec. And let's find out if your reasoning is correct once again. Mm. And unfortunately, it is answer D, Derek Bosch. So I guess Volker Latusek designed a puzzle related to Christmas at some point. Yeah, it's it's possible that he's designed one in the past. I've I've not been following him forever. It's more recently that I've known about him, so it's possible that I just you know just don't know of an older design of his, or maybe it's a recent one I'm missing. Who knows? Then let's move on to question number nine. And remember, you still have one lifeline: the hint to use a Christmas puzzle by Creative Craft House is made up of 21 pieces of Christmas-related scenes and objects. Which item is not featured as a puzzle piece? Answer A, reindeer. Answer B, elf. Answer C, Christmas tree. Or answer D, candy cane. Oh boy. <laughs> I've seen their puzzles that have this sort of theming with all the different packing pieces, but I've never seen the Christmas one, so I have no idea. Um, yes. Brian, unless you have this one, I think we should take a hint on this one. Yeah, same, no idea. Then let's use your final lifeline, the hint. And the hint is Dobby. Okay, I think we know the answer oh, for this that's one. That's a very good hint. <laughs> yep, I'm, I'm glad we saved our hint for this one. So, B yes. elf? Yes, I guess you connected Dobby with Harry Potter, and so let's validate answer B, Elf. And indeed, it is the correct answer, well done. So, Harry Potter, have you read the books or watched the movies? Or do you have children that were fan of it at some point? I, I like the books and the movies. Yeah, I read them all fairly recently. I never read any of it when I was a kid, but yeah, I enjoyed them. Yeah, I enjoyed the books as well. I really liked them and I really enjoyed the universe. So, quite a tough question. I mean, 21 pieces, if you are not familiar with a puzzle, then I think you are kind of screwed because you need to remember each piece and it's quite a lot. Yeah, elf seemed like the most likely just because it's going to be an odd shape, but you never know. People could make an elf, you know, doing a pose or something and it could be a perfectly fine packing puzzle, so. Yeah, that was going to be my guess as well. It's less distinguishable in a silhouette, so. But I'm happy we took the hint. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so let's move on to your final question. Question number 10. Christmas 2000 is a packing puzzle designed by Stuart Coffin. How many pieces do you need to fit in the rectangular tray? Answer A, 5. Answer B, 6. Answer C, 7. Or answer D, 8. I've seen a lot of Stuart Coffin packing puzzles. I have don't recall ever seeing Christmas 2000. Um, my guess is it's a fewer number of pieces because he tends to make puzzles that have like four or five or something, but five or six. Yeah, particularly for a tray packing puzzle, I think fewer is more likely for him. Yeah. Do you think 
should we go with five? Because that's more more his thing. I mean, it could be six, but I think that like four or five is the sweet spot of his puzzle. So. Yeah, I feel like five would be my choice as well. Okay. Yeah, I don't have a lot of confidence in that, but sure, let's go with five. A. Okay, let's validate your final answer. Answer A, five, and let's find out if it is the correct answer. And indeed, well done. It is answer A. Hey. Oh, good job. Nice. Are you familiar with the designer Stuart Coffin or his puzzles? Yeah. Um, actually, my wife and I met over a Stuart Coffin puzzle because uh, um, I went to a party a long time ago and she was playing with the Hex Hectics puzzle. And uh, I noticed that and I went over and, and asked if I could uh, try too. And we kind of worked together to solve um, the, the puzzle. And uh, that was uh, um, sort of a way for me to get a chance to talk with her. So, um, so we got a chance to meet Stuart Coffin in person uh, some years later, actually after our son was born, um, and got to tell him that uh, you know it was because of him that we, we got together in some ways. And so he and his wife both appreciated that. But such an incredible story. That's so cool. And so what was his reaction once you told him that you both met because of one of his puzzles? Oh yeah, definitely. Yes, they, they, we took a picture with him and, and our son. And uh, yeah, yeah, it was, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, he's a great guy. He actually looks pretty close to me. He's, uh, he's in the next town over. So still doing well. He's, uh, he's a great uh asset to the community with all of his designs and particularly how available that he's made his designs you know people are able to produce them if they like and uh, he's actually interested in, uh, in working on a website to sort of have his compendium of puzzles available on there for people to look at so he's working on that now so you managed to answer eight questions out of ten well done both of you are vice masters such a great job and i must say i really enjoyed watching both of you your reasoning through the questions and finding the correct answers i am so glad that you are my guests and i was able to meet you and i hope you enjoyed the quiz oh yeah that was that was fun yeah yeah it was fun this is the kind of stuff Brian and I talk about anyway when we when we hang out. Just not necessarily quizzing each other, but we talk about puzzle, right. puzzles we like and designs we've seen. So, yeah, and I'm terrible with names of puzzles and designers and things like that. So yeah, definitely good to be able to reason some of these out and have, yeah. uh, have Rhett here for backup. <laughs> I was glad that I had watched some of your previous uh, episodes because I knew that your puzzle difficulty ramped up. So we should save our uh, lifelines for later. And before we end this video, would you like to share a bit more about you, about a project or something you would like to share with the community? Yeah, every year uh, my wife and I put together something called Club Drosselmeyer, which is a 1940s nightclub nutcracker puzzle hunt sort of extravaganza. So um, this will be our first year doing a live show since COVID. Uh, we started in 2016, did four live shows uh, once every December. Uh, we did a couple shows, and then uh, the last two years we've been doing radio shows so people can participate from the safety of their home. So you, uh, you listen to this radio show that's sort of an automated system, and then you're calling in uh, via the phone to interact with the characters again through uh, this automated system that we set up, um, which changes the way that the radio show plays out for you. Uh, and that is still available. I know a lot of your viewers are probably not in the Boston area and won't be able to come to the show, or uh, or this maybe will air after uh, for the live show. But uh, if they're interested in checking it out, they can go to clubdrosselmeyer.com uh, for both the, the radio show and the live show. Yeah, let me um, chime in here and say uh, there's also swing dancing, there's a live band, there's uh, you know uh, performers like aerialists and things. It's amazing how much you put into the show and it actually works and people can go and just dance if they want or they can go and just solve puzzles if they want but the puzzles are themed to the story of the year and they involve um, resolutions that then lead to different outcomes in the show and so if you go on a different night you might see a different uh, ending of the show at least in previous years um, and this year what what year will it be uh, in in the game uh, we're going back to 1939 so yeah and the 
previous live shows, we've got 1939, 40, 41, 42, and now we're going back to 1939. But it's going to be all different from the last time we did 1939, because that was our first year. We hadn't quite figured out how to how to do it the way that we wanted. So yeah, we've got a lot of fun things in store this year. Wow, that's truly a beautiful project. I am sure you spent so much time and energy, both you and your wife, on this project, and you make it every year. That's wonderful. That must be such a cool event. And I am sure despite all the work, it must be worth it in the end. Really, Brian, Brett, it was a pleasure to host you on this show and to meet you. I wish both of you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Merry Christmas. Yeah, Merry Christmas to you too. Bye. Again, a big thank you, Brian and Brett, for joining today's special Christmas edition. Eight questions answered correctly. That's so crazy because the questions were so tough. So please send them some congratulations in the comments section. I hope you did enjoy this episode. If you did, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, to like this video. I will see you next time for a new video. Until then, have a great Christmas. Tschüss.